Welcome to another Whisper Talk book review of the 15th book I read of the year. Let me show you what it was. Not a An American Housewife by Margaret Dillaway. A lovely TikTok friend bought this for me off of my Amazon wish list. And I had it on there for a while simply because I had not read an historical fiction about this topic. It's not that I wasn't familiar with the concept and the topic, but I hadn't read anything about it. It's about Shoko, and I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing this wrong, but she is the oldest child of a Japanese family during World War II, and the second oldest is her brother. But of course, during this time and in this culture, boys are supreme even if they're not the oldest. And Shoko, in hopes of living a better life and getting out of Japan, marries a GI soldier. And her brother, Taro, disowns her, does not agree with her choices, and goes on with life as if she doesn't exist. And when she moves to America, she's the only one in her family who does so. So she's extremely removed from what's going on in her family regarding her mother, father, younger brother, and younger sister, Shuki, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. When she comes to America, she's completely unfamiliar with the expectations on her as a housewife. So her American husband gives her a book entitled How to Be an American Housewife, which is geared for Japanese women who have come over after marrying an American man and how they can assimilate into society and what needs to be left behind of their culture and what of their culture still is acceptable. And it has things in there from recipes to how to raise your children to your role as a housewife and how to be, how to treat your husband, things like that. She has two children with her husband, a son and a daughter, and her husband was in the medical field, but his career never took off. And their life financially is on the lower end. And her children seem to live lackluster lives and she blames herself and how she raised them. And um, Shoko blames herself. And we just see even 50 years later, the difficulty she has living in America. She's used to it, but not used to it. And it often feels like her and her husband, even after half of a century, are still strangers to one another. They're used to each other's tics and habits, but how each other's cultures are still seems to be shocking to them. Their son is presented as a failure, and it's because Shoko feels because the book, How to Be an American Housewife, said, raise your son as you would in Japan. And she feels that doesn't work in America. And her daughter doesn't seem to be living up to her potential. And again, blames it on how she was reared. And if things were done differently, would she be more successful and more driven? Of course, the daughter feels like she could never live up to her mother's expectations. And we learn through... Shoko's desire to go back to Japan due to her failing health to hopefully reconcile with her brother, we learn the dynamics of the cultures centuries, not centuries, but years later. Shoko is not deemed healthy enough to go to Japan, so she enlists her daughter and her granddaughter to go on her behalf and deliver a letter to her younger brother. And it's just so interesting. We get back and forth between World War II and present day and time in between. Just how much of a culture shock 
Japanese women went through when they came to America, when they married an American, specifically a GI soldier, in hopes of getting out of Japan and that life, or what the life was becoming post-war. And there's, I, as a reader, I was getting frustrated in a good way, in a way you want to get frustrated when you're engaged in reading. And it was just so interesting to read about what life was then and what the expectations were of these women from the standpoint of making pasta sauce completely foreign to them and your husband going, this isn't how my mom makes it, but they were following the book, How to Be an American Housewife, just things like that. The ending is very satisfying. Everything wraps up and I'm not, I was not left disappointed. And I was disappointed to learn that How to Be an American Housewife, the guidebook that's spoken about in this book, isn't actually a real book. It's based on another book. The author's mother married an American man and she was Japanese and her husband gave her the book The American Way of Housekeeping and it was written in both Japanese and English but the book was actually geared for domestic help not housewives but this woman used it as a housewife and this whole story in concept is based on the author's mother not necessarily the estrangement of family members, but just the concept of coming over to America from Japan, marrying an American whom you may or may not love in hopes of a better life. It was a little slow in the beginning. I will say that. It picked up tremendously when Shoko's daughter and granddaughter went to Japan. I felt like everything came alive then. So I will say it's slow in the beginning. But all that being said, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. I'm so thankful a TikTok friend bought it for me. And up next are some quotes. So until next time, happy reading.